Hello, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you the initial checkout and repair video of a AT&T 210 trim line. Now this is some of the last good equipment that they made in the trim line uh, model. And so uh, this is uh, Joanna's and Jim's telephone from uh, Virginia. And uh, basically she's got a letter here that uh, complains about the number nine and that they don't have a card for the base, which we have over here that we're going to uh, install. And also, uh, this is about as good as we're going to match this telephone color-wise. She's also talking about the color of the handset cord. And this one is a little longer than the one they had, and I think they specified that they wanted it a little longer. I believe I remember her saying something like that. But uh, that's about as close to this beige as we're going to get. So the white one is all they could find. They couldn't find any color cords anymore. And uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is ring this telephone, and the ringer is off right now, so I'm going to put it on low, and it'll hit the ring cycle. I'm going to turn it on high. Let that go one more time. Give you some dial tone. And what's cool about this handset is it has a low, a medium, and a high. And they call it normal, and then whatever their medium is, and then loud. And I'm going to move that back and forth for you. But it doesn't seem to make a difference. And it's been my experience that this switch always needs a little uh, looking after and a little repair. So we'll, we'll, when we're into this telephone, we'll go ahead and repair that. But uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we've got the analyzer seized, and I'm going to go ahead and dial my numbers. And like in the letter, number 9 does not hit. The star does, 0 and pound. We'll hang up, hit redial, and what we'll be missing is the 9. So the 9 does not work. And uh, we're going to walk through the numbers one more time. That time the nine did hit, but it's, see how funny it's acting. Now that one wants to stick. So now they're sticking. looks like the nine sticking. So basically what we're going to have to do is go through this telephone and troubleshoot it. And uh, we, we've done quite a few videos on these two tens. And I always talk about cleaning the keypad. And this is a plastic keypad in this model. And it has drawn on conductive material. And if you don't clean it the proper way, what you'll do is uh, erase that conductive material and ruin the dial pad or the keypad. Uh, so you have to be very careful when you clean these. And if you've never done it before, uh, I'm not sure I would try. And, and then you also have to clean it properly or you can totally ruin the keypad. And the 9 is still sticking. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break here, 
and I'm going to go ahead and um, start troubleshooting this telephone. What we could do is end the video here in a minute, because what I'm going to do, and then we would be right back to you, but what I'll do is, uh, while we're here, I'll go ahead and uh, start disassembling the phone. getting it ready to uh, go into the keypad and also um, catch any bad solder that we don't like and repair the switch for the normal, medium, and loud uh, setting. We want to go ahead and get these out of the way here. keypad up or our board, our main PC board. Kind of got to be careful here because of all the wires. And we also want to disengage it from the main PC board. Kind of flip it around. Now this gets a little tricky taking this apart, but um, we'll go ahead and start taking this apart. A lot of times what happens is uh, they'll be sticky and you won't get them apart right away. I don't know if the video is picking this up, but there's all kinds of sticky stuff on this uh, back of this cosmetic number plate so that's all sticky and just from the looks at it we're going to find quite a bit of uh, liquid that has caused the problem on this keypad I can see it all through the uh, copper plate underneath here all sticky. I don't know if you can pick that up on the video, but uh, that's all sticky. As you can see, it doesn't want to come apart because it's sticking. And we're going to get down to the keypad here, which is plastic. And this is what I'm talking about. I can see it I don't know if the video can see it, but this is all sticky in here. So this liquid has made it into the keypad here. And it's pretty sticky. It doesn't want to really come apart here. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Shut the video down for a second. We'll be right back. We'll do what we need to do, and then we'll come back in, in the repair process. So we'll, we will be right back. Okay, I just wanted to show you, take a quick look. I have the uh, keypad apart now, and um, I'm not sure if the video is picking it up, but it is totally sticky. And um, I'm going to take a Q-tip here kind of give you an ideal if you can't pick it up on the video. Try to get a Q-tip that's a little clean here. We have a piece of a Q-tip here and I'm just going to swipe over and this is by no means the way we clean it. I'm just trying to pick up some of the so you can, you can see how that's yellowed and how bad that really is just from a couple of swipes over it. 
And you have to be very gentle with this keypad. I deal with these all the time, so I kind of know how to treat them. But if you bend them too much, you will definitely break the traces. They're just conductive material, and they will wipe off. So now that gives you some kind of idea of just how much liquid and dirt was basically on this keypad. And I know it was only the number 9 at the point um, that was causing the problem, but the whole thing would have been a problem sooner or later because it's, it's all over the board here. And basically what this... Um, this foreign material does is it eventually eats the conductive material and you can actually see where it's already started to wear on some of the traces they've turned different colors there's one right there that uh, is actually a different color and right in through here and it's starting to work in here so it's a good thing that we caught this because this keypad would have uh, just gotten worse and it would have not been able to conduct certain numbers because the conductive material would uh, have been eaten away. So we're going to stop the video. I'll be right back. We're going to go ahead and do some things and clean some things here and uh, we'll go from there. Be right back with you. Okay, we're back now and the dial pad has been cleaned and I'm going to show you here it looks a little better now than it did before it was pretty dirty and um, I'm going to set that there here's the dial pad all apart it was really sticky and it was very hard to peel apart and you have to be really careful with this and if you don't clean it right what will happen is this conductive material will uh, break or it will uh, rub off so you have to clean it properly and then um, here's our keypad that's all clean our housing and then the copper has been cleaned and you'll notice that it's been stained but it's all clean now so that's not sticky any longer so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a break here and um, we're going to be getting into the uh, volume control switch. I'm going to go ahead and, and put back the keypad, and um, we'll kind of go from there, and we'll pick up the video here in a second. And so I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're back, and uh, a few things happened while we were gone. Um, went through the board and resoldered everything. Also cleaned and resoldered the volume control switch here where they got normal, probably medium and loud. And then uh, also resoldered some things that we didn't like on the PC board. And one last thing that I want to do here is I want to touch up the solder connections. I want to clean my soldering gun. I like to try to catch all the solder that I can while we're in these. And so what I want to do now is I want to resolder this last part of it. And this is the modular port. We'll get that real fast. And so what we're going to do now is some checks. give you some dial tone and uh, the volume is on low so I want to put it on medium probably heard that increase and that's all the way up that's loud medium and low medium and loud all the way down all the way up. Now also this is a time where we want to check our numbers. So if you watch the analyzer I'm going to end in a 2 
hit redial and that should end in a 2 after it's done racking off okay so now what we want to do is we want to pull the modular plug now it's time to start putting it all back together again so what we want to do is we want to get our hook switch in here there's also a little spring that goes in there there's all kinds of little pieces and parts that will fall out of these when you start working on them we want to get our switch in there for our volume control we want to make sure our switch for our our bell our piezo buzzer is on set everything down into place here start getting these screws back together for the main PC board then we're going to do some final checks also want to install this new new cord and uh, the number display for the contacts right now would be a good time to go ahead and snap the unit back together again make sure our button because over time what happens is your plastic can warp so we want to make sure that that's nice and free we'll go ahead and put our number card in There you go. We're going to install our cord. There's your dial tone. There's your tone and pulse button. We're on high right now. We'll go to low. If you watch the analyzer, you'll see a ring cycle go by. It's on uh, off. Put it on low. And then we'll shoot up to high. Let that go one more time. We'll adjust our volume here. I'm going to go down to medium and then to low. Medium and loud. We're going to walk through our numbers again.
and then a 2 redial now if you remember at the beginning of the video number 9 was a, a major problem it was an issue we'll go ahead and do, do some 9 so I'll go 9 8 9 6 9 0 9 2 6 9 9 2 9 0 9 8 9 2 9 We'll walk through the numbers one more time. And then a 2. Now we're going to go ahead and transmit. Every time you see that red indicator light on the analyzer, that's an indication of 100% modulation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, hello. So we know this telephone is in working condition now. And Joanna and Jim are going to be able to enjoy this uh, trim line AT&T 210 once again. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a 2, take away dial tone, and there's a mute button so I'm gonna go ahead and talk but I'm gonna hold the mute button at the same time now you see the red light on the analyzer one two three but I'm gonna press the mute button while I'm talking and now I'm gonna let off of it so one two three four five six I'm gonna push it down one two three four five six and I let off of it so we know the mute button works also Some of the last good equipment that they made in the trim line model, and it's a very, very decent phone. It's it's good equipment, and um, sometimes they need a little bit of looking after and repair. But uh, these telephones are in good shape, um, and and they're made really well, and uh, they last a long time. So now that this one's repaired, I'm sure it'll be around for quite a while, and. Um, it's just a great telephone. Some of the last good stuff out there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move it over to a regular line and I'm going to call a time and temp number. Good evening. Need service for your car today? Call any of our service departments or make an appointment online at Offenberg.com. Today is Monday, January 16th. The time is 11.01. Current temperature, 68 degrees. Now the weather forecast for the Belleville area. Occasional showers and thunderstorms, likely tonight, breezy with a low in the low 40s. Mostly cloudy and windy and much colder on Tuesday. A chance of rain early in the morning, partly cloudy in the late afternoon. A high in the low 40s, temperature falling into the 30s. Northwest wind gusting to 35. Okay. Now what I can do is I'll call my number and it'll be busy. So we know that the telephone's in working condition and uh, I'll go ahead and unplug it now and uh, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1 hyphen telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Thank you for watching and have a great day.